All right, remember, you're on a timer. You have five minutes to present. You'll have five minutes for questions and answers. And then where's the clicker? There's the clicker on the table over there. We're very high tech around here and service oriented, as you can tell. And I've been told not to go left of this line. Yeah. All right. You ready? Badass. Welcome. Thank you. Good evening, Dallas New Tech. How are you guys tonight? How are you tonight? That's better. So that's a bio, and I'm going to skip right over that. Um, I'm Nathan. I'm with Mass Venture, and we're part of the Collide Village Accelerator Program. We're one of several companies uh, that are with that accelerator. And the problem that we're solving is that there are a few events that happen in people's lifetimes where the complete landscape changes in investing. If you look at the history of investment in public finance in this country since 1792, there have been a handful of things that have really changed the way people invest. And as you can see, over the course of this, GDP per capita has gone up tremendously. But when you look at who owns the financial assets in this country, 84% of the financial uh, assets are owned by the top 10% of individuals. And when you look at what most people are holding, most Americans are missing out on that GDP growth. Most Americans have the vast majority of their money in cash and a very small amount in other investments. And this problem is getting worse. When you think about your parents' generation, they typically have brokerage accounts, they typically have 401ks, they typically have pensions and things like that. But the current generations that are making up an increasing portion of our population want to be self-directed in their investing. People want to control how their money is spent, and values-based investing is turning out to be a tremendous new force in letting people decide how their money affects the world and the community around them. Obviously, you can see that the U.S. population um, is very much made up of Gen X, Millennials, and the following generation. And it's a huge, huge shift in the way that people participate in their community. We know that building things costs money, and Americans have investable income. That's actually $6.7 trillion annually in investable income. But people generally don't invest that in ownership of things around them. And the reason why is regulation. There have been regulations in the past that have kept Americans apart from being able to invest in private investment. So we proposed a solution. We went to our local representatives and we said, this is something that needs to change. I'm a startup attorney by training, so I've represented startups uh, in venture and seed series financing. And the thing that always struck me as really strange about that is that only accredited investors could generally participate in that. When you look at a new building going up, when you look at a new company starting out, all of that investment activity occurs through accredited investors, which is people typically that have a million dollars in assets excluding their primary residence. What that does is that typically excludes the younger generations, it excludes people who are out there actively working, and it really tends to accrete that wealth like you saw at the top 10%. So we went and spoke to our representative, I went and testified to the House Investments Committee um, and said there is a better way to do this. And as a result of that, Texas changed the rules for investing. Uh, this got started with the Jobs Act, but Texas kind of jumped uh, right over that, leapfrogged over that, and last year in November, unanimously passed new crowdfunding rules that allow any Texan to invest in local real estate, local businesses, and startups near them. This is a tremendous change. And as you might expect from folks that uh, were part of the lobbying for this, we were also the first uh, crowdfunding portal licensed and registered by the state of Texas. So we got our license last year, uh, and we've been building out our investment platform since then. Under this new system, you can invest in all kinds of local business. It could be a brew pub, it could be commercial property, it could be residential property, it could be a restaurant, it could be anything that changes the community in which you live. And how big is this market? It's huge. In 2015, uh, crowdfunding globally was $34 billion, and real estate 
is about $180 billion. So we're Mass Venture. We provide a way for every Texan to invest in projects near them, and we'd all love to have you as users on our platform. Thank you. Okay, questions? No questions, wow. Let's, let's all start over here, yeah. Sure, so the question is how do you protect investors and people that are on the platform and what kind of screening do you do? Um, as a state registered portal, we're what's called a broker dealer and limited by the state in what we do. So that means we have to verify the identity of everybody who's investing to make sure that they're actually a Texas resident and to make sure they are who they say they are. And we also have to background check the companies and the ventures that are investing. So there's a series of checks that we do. One of them is called a bad actor check, and it's exactly what it sounds like. Uh, we're looking for fraud. We're looking for previous convictions. We're looking for administrative actions. Anything that would give us an indicator um, that that person is not trustworthy or not capable. Um, and that's required by the state. Also, every single one of the investments on our platform gets registered with the state securities board before it goes live. So there's an, an, an additional set of eyes on that uh, before it goes out. And then we also have a proprietary research and diligence practice that we go through before we place investments online. Yeah. Sure, so uh, the largest market that we have is residential and commercial real estate. Uh, typically the projects that we have up for investment are in the 500 to $800,000 range. Uh, we're allowed to raise up to a million dollars every 12 months for each project on the site. Uh, obviously not everybody's going to need that full amount of money. And the reason we started with real estate is because it is a very tangible asset and it's something that people inherently understand. We also are available for local businesses that are trying to get started uh, and expand their footprint uh, in their local area. It's possible for us to do startups and tech companies in the future, uh, but that's something we haven't tackled yet because as most of you in the startup community know, uh, nine out of 10 startups will fail. Uh, so it is something that you have to be very, very knowledgeable about uh, to invest in that kind of uh, tech at this point. Yeah, so this is kind of an interesting, interesting thing. The U.S. is a little bit behind the rest of the world when it comes to crowdfunding. Uh, the U.S. launched the Jobs Act in 2012, which would have given nationwide crowdfunding, but it has taken until this year for the SEC in Washington to act on that. So some of you may have seen that in October there were some big changes that will be taking effect through 2016. Um, but places like the U.K. have had crowdfunding uh, for investment since 2011 and there are a number of other places outside the US that have had this for a lot longer time So we can look and we can see how it's performed in those markets and then obviously look and see at the opportunity that exists here in the US and in Texas So look, we're kind of like a Kickstarter in the sense that we take a percentage of the funds raised uh, That also means that if the company's not successful, we don't get paid uh, so we're very much tied to the success of the projects on our platform. No, there's no ongoing. So unlike if you're a sophisticated real estate investor, you may be used to having management fees. You may be used to participating in a fund. These are direct investments in the company that are run through our broker dealer platform. And so we do not take an ongoing management fee. Sure, so that's gonna vary depending upon the investment, um, but we've got a number of different uh, opportunities. So an example that you might see is something where somebody's building a single family home and refurbishing that. That's gonna be a pretty short strategy. That'll be less than a year usually. Whereas a commercial property where they're gonna build it, uh, occupy it with tenants and cash flow for a while, could be a three to five year period. 
So it depends product by product, and you can build a portfolio that matches your investment strategy. Yeah. So I'm seeing that I have five seconds left, but I'd love to talk to you about that afterwards. We do have different processes for each one. All right, thank you everybody. If you have questions, come find me afterwards. Great job, man, thank you. Leave the clicker behind though.